Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Executive Director Search Ad Hoc Subcommittee uh, for the comment. Uh, it's 12 o'clock. This meeting will now come to order. Uh, Ms. Bob, I'll read if you don't mind when you can take the roll to ensure we have a quorum. Yes, sir. Uh, Chairman Walker. Present. Mr. Fergus. Present. Ms. Herbert. Ms. Mood. Present. And Mr. Smith. Present. I also just want to acknowledge the presence of one of our board uh, members, um, you know, Dr. Morris, who Thank is uh, in attendance Thank you. Uh, this afternoon. And certainly I'm quite sure he uh, his years of experience uh, in transit and being on the board. I'm sort of looking forward to uh, you know, his input as well. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is item two, which is the adoption of the agenda. Uh, any changes, additions, or deletions? There being none, I entertain a motion. Is there a second? Second. That's been moved to properly second. Any discussion? That being done, I'll just follow the please. Uh, Chairman Walker? Uh, yes. Mr. Fergus? Yes. Ms. Herbert? Ms. Mood? Yes. Mr. Smith? <clears throat> yes. Next item on the agenda is uh, item three, which is uh, discussion and action items. I guess before we really get into uh, items, let me just say uh, that at least going forward, it is my hope that we can have um, you know, okay. Mr. Deschamps or have the staff uh, for the comment actually uh, present uh, to the body I guess our information for our consideration. What I don't want to have happen is we show up for these meetings and it's just a conversation that's being had uh, by members of the committee, but I at least want the staff to uh, provide us with the information uh, that we need to be able to, uh, I guess, make uh, the best decision, or I should say the best recommendation possible uh, to the full board when we get to that point. Uh, at least today, uh, we'll just, discuss the various items uh, that are on the agenda. Um, and if we have any marching orders that we would like to give uh, to Mr. Deschamps, um, <laughs> next meeting, we certainly can do that today. Uh, but I don't expect that, I guess, going to be any final decisions that come out of today's meeting. Um, so the next item on the agenda is item 3A, which is the, the position overview. I believe uh, Ms. Bono Reed provided us all with a copy uh, of the uh, your current uh, position description. And so I'm willing to just open the floor at this point for any comments, you know, questions, uh, or suggestions regarding uh, the uh, the position, whether or not we want to make any changes you know, to the current position uh, you know, prior to you know, posting it uh, as a vacancy. Mr. Chair. You recognize Mr. Fergus? Um, the, the requirements seem like they're well prepared, but I look back at the minimum requirements. And maybe Dr. Morris maybe even answered it. We have a minimum of 10 years. Was that was that negotiable or flexible? We use that as a basis, but um, you know, if we found a candidate uh, who really, really met the needs in less than 10 years, we would consider that candidate. And also, uh, that master's degree preferred, so that isn't a strict, wasn't a strict requirement. No. Well, let me ask you this, uh, uh, Dr. Morris. Uh, so the 10 years, uh, uh, that was not mandatory, I guess, to Ms., uh, Mr. Ferguson's point, but would it be fair to say that was 10 years preferred, 10 years experience preferred? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. All right. While you were looking through uh, this item that was uh, passed out, I see the salary range. Um, we paid Mr. And or $175,000. Now, I don't know whether or not uh, you're going to take that under consideration or 
You want to start at a less amount to negotiate. So 170,000. Oh, I'm sorry. Ms. Andrews? Ms. Andrews, you recognize? Yes, um, the 175 was Mr. Huggins. And was one for Oh, yes, you're right. You're right, Mr. Huggins. I'm oh. sorry. So um, do, I guess do we want to leave the base or the starting base salary as is, or you think that number needs to be higher? And I believe Mr. Ando, when he was hired, what year was that? 2018. 2018. Do we know if there's been, I guess, any um, change uh, in salaries as you know, far as for uh, executive directors for other transit authorities you know, around the country or, or maybe just in the southeastern part of the, the country over the past you know, four years? I don't know personally, but I can look that sure. up. Okay. And, I, and, I, and I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, and I only asked a question because I know at least over at the county uh, that we are having discussions now just about salaries. And, and so we know with COVID, a lot has changed over the past couple of years. What was once being a competitive salary, you know, just a year and a half, two years ago, now you have people who aren't even considering jobs uh, or positions, uh, you know, that are paying comparable to what you know, salaries were two years ago. So certainly don't want to overpay, but also we just want to make sure that we're uh, attracting uh, the best and brightest. So. Uh, Mr. Ferguson, you. Uh, Ms. Mood, uh, Ms. Mood, before before I recognize you, uh, Mr. Yes. Burgess had a comment. After Mr. Thank Burgess, then you. Yes. On, the, on the last package, all the none of the applications for the position had a salary requirement above one fifteen. You know, they went from I think sixty five to one fifteen. The reason we did uh, John Ando at one forty. Is because Bob walked out the door at 140, and we were hammered with Mr. Ando, so we gave him the same salary. But I'm thinking this time we have so much that we're looking for. If we go with our long range plans, we may make should advertise a minimum starting salary. And leave it to the board with what it takes to get that person or you know, and just not so what we we'll do would just be a recommendation, right? right. The full board ultimately have to make, make that call. Uh Ms. Mood, you recognize and then Mr. Smith. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, I think I'm on the same track as Mr. Burgess. I was thinking that for posting, we would it be um better to post a salary range? That's a question because I'm certainly not opposed to a range, <laughs> so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't argue against that. Of course, I, I think when you post a range, you kind of are encouraging encouraging people to look at the top end. I know. So. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Any additional thoughts on um, Ms. Moods? Uh, comment or question about a range. Mr. Smith, you recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I'm just, I find myself in looking at the job description and then thinking about the, how we, how we frame the salary or compensation um, question. I, I have a lot of open questions. I'm not, because of the change environment, changing environment and sort of where we are, I'm wondering if, you know, later in the agenda, where looks like we're going to consider the question of a search firm, if that wouldn't be something that they would help us with, both the position description itself and the framing of the of the compensation. And uh, to to Mr. Burgess's point, I I think we're probably not adequately considering, you know, this kind of special projects management experience that I think we're going to need in either the position description or the salary expectation. So all those things, it just seems to me that if we could get some input with, from, from experts that are, you know, far more up to speed than we are, that that would help. Yeah. Any comments or? That, that makes sense to me, yeah. Go ahead, Ms. Moon. <laughs> Yes, I was just saying that makes sense to me. I, I, I apologize for, for 
I am sitting on I-26, as is the usual case when you come from Chapin, so <laughs> no telling when I'll get there. But. No apology needed. Uh, to me, it appears that you are very committed to transit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it, so I guess what I'm sort of hearing is that if, with respect to the salary piece to this, certainly we would want staff to look and see what uh, other regional transit authorities are paying, uh, you know, currently, but also whichever search firm that we go with, um, it's something that we would want them to look into as well. Is, is that is that's kind of what I'm hearing? Okay, and uh, and I guess as far as a position overview. Perhaps we just leave leave everything as is for now, or, or do we have anything else that we want to include in the position? Or again, you know, is that something we rather just take it up with the search firm? We get to that point. But you recognize Mr. Burgess. I think we, if if we going to continue with our mixed use development, we probably want to include some of that in sure. because if a person is so well qualified in that area may supersede anything with, you know, with the statute, gotcha. because the staff will handle most of this anyway. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and I know for me, what would be important for uh, the next executive director, someone that may has that may have some uh, experience or at least dealings with economic development. Um, certainly transit and economic development to me go hand in hand. Um, so I think that that piece is going to be important. And, you know, and, and you know, Mr. Fergus, you've been sounding the alarm on this now for a while. And that is, you know, at some point, you're going to have to uh, figure out a way to fund transit going forward. And so will this person uh, have any experience in dealing with uh, procuring funding uh, for transit? Has this person ever dealt with uh, a penny sales tax or, or any sort of uh, referendum uh, when it comes to funding transit. So I think that's going to be uh, important uh, for us, whoever uh, is hired for whoever we, the board decides to hire for this position. And maybe that's something we can, I'm not sure if that is in the job description, uh, but certainly making sure that, uh, you know, that's something that's, if it's not in there, it's part of it. Uh, it's and then I was reading through these uh, search firms, and only one of them mentioned anything about rail. See, uh, some of that's going to be what what we plan to do with the intermodal. You know, and that's five years down the road. It's any has to be something that's selling to the county to give us a penny again. Right. So if we don't do it right and. Cadillac, you kiss that penny goodbye, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Anything else on the position overview before we move on to the next item? All right. Next item is uh, item 3B, defining and fine tuning what the comment needs. Um, open the floor for discussion on that. Uh, anyone has any thoughts as to um, you know, what we believe the the comment needs or pretty much fine tuning or, or what have you, or whatever our current needs are. And, and making sure that um, what we hire as executive director um, you know, comes in with the experience knowing how to address uh, those needs. And I don't know if that's, if you know, in order for us to just have an informed discussion about that, if we need input from staff. Um, and so maybe this is a conversation for the next meeting that I don't know, but at least kind of want to put it out there and just uh, begin to hear from our uh, colleagues as to you know, their thoughts on uh, the needs of the comment. I can add one thing. Yeah. Final read, you recognize? Good people skills. That would definitely make my job easier because I don't have to fix stuff as much because of misunderstandings and, and, and different things like that. So I think that's number one. That's kind of how my priority is. And, and someone who is fair, who will treat the staff fairly. It's pretty much some type of soft skills. Yes. All right, but what about technical skills? Well, certainly, okay. 
Your name is just escapes me right Prince. now. Prince. Miss Prince. Miss Prince, yeah. you recognize. Okay. I just want to say that, of course, everything everyone has already shared is good in terms of economic development, procuring, being able to go out the funding and the people <clears> skills. But also, one thing that we have been focusing on a lot is. Um, small business development or DBE development. So someone that has an interest in doing business with small businesses and can help push the agenda in that particular area. Mr. Chair, I think first uh, a key to uh, that person will have to have some experience dealing with diverse managers. You know, a person coming from a different area is used to one type. Uh, South or you know wherever you come from, mm -hmm. and you're different with dealing with a different organization, different political climate, and you don't have that in the background. You have right. problems here, you know. Yeah, well, certainly sounds like what you say, Mister Ferguson. Somebody who is uh, who has an appreciation for politics. That's correct. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes. Ms. Moon. Yeah. The, the three things that have been on my mind that are different now in this search than when we were looking for an executive director before are one, Mr. Fergus has already mentioned, is the development of, a, of the um, multi-use and multimodal center being a part of that multi-use project. That's, that's a big one. Um, a, a second one is the um, upcoming need to, uh, for, will need for a referendum to continue to fund the, the comet, that's a much more urgent um, at, in a position at this point in time than it was before when we still had more years to go. And then the third one that's been particularly on my mind is that we've had so much um, difficulty recruiting for a, the planning position that I'm, uh, I've been feeling that we really need some strong planning skills in an executive director because it doesn't done is just hadn't been promising to think that we're going to have a second position that has those um that, that we are able to fill easily so those the, the planning the multi-use project and the upcoming um referendum are the three things on my mind sure and let me just before i get to you dr morris let me just say this um I'm probably sure you all have probably heard about lexington county and voting down uh you know, their penny uh, i think that was two weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't know, you know, if that pretends anything for Richland County, I'll just say that it does make me a little nervous, uh, or skittish rather, because like you said, five years from now, we're gonna have to be looking at this again. Uh, and what happened, you know, the, I wanna say that was the Sunday before they took that vote over in Lexington County, was the state newspaper ran an article about the upcoming vote. And the article was supposed to be about the Lexington County penny, but most of it was about the Richland County penny. And it just rehashed all the you know, old negative headlines. Uh, and I truly believe that was a factor in that vote uh, coming up short. Uh, so, you know, I don't know if that pretends anything for us here in Richland County five years from now, uh, but just you know, to see that. Uh, it, but again, it is Lexington County, and they tend to be just uh, when the issue of tax is just a little more conservative than, than Richland. Uh, but I do know that the Lexington County Council was uh, very much in support of the penny passing. They were, dis they were disappointed uh, when it uh, when it failed. So for just for what that is worth, um, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, Ms. Moo. Uh, I. Had you recognized Dr. Morris? I'm, I can wait. Okay. Uh, yeah, you go ahead. You go ahead, Ms. Moon. Okay, well, I was just going to say that, as you would expect, I've been in conversation with some people in Lexington County, as I was before they framed the referendum question, and I was very disappointed that the referendum question did not include any funding for public transit. The tight penny that they chose to put on the referendum question was a purely capital you know, expense penny, which meant that it was limited to um, just roads and, roads, and, and, yeah. and yes. And so, you know, <clears throat> I don't know if that would have fared any differently if it had been a broader question or not. We, um, but, but, in it, but what I do know, uh, what I am expecting is that um, 
it was probably hard for the council to decide to put that on the on the ballot. And I think with the defeat of that, it's going to be really hard to get another another look at a referendum question. Well, Ms. Moon, I, I will defer to, you know, Dr. Morris and Mr. Furgis as far as the history of the penny, but just a little bit of history I'm familiar with here in Richland County. Uh, it's my understanding when it was uh, initially proposed, it failed because it primarily just dealt with transit. And it wasn't until uh, your roads were included that it actually gained traction here in Richland County, just because most Richland residents you know, don't use public transit. And so that has a tendency, I think, to sort of impact uh, their view of whether of it being a, I guess, a, um, a priority when it comes to you know, spending public dollars. And so that's why I say this kind of makes me a little nervous knowing that we're coming up on five years and that and the fact that uh, a newspaper article that runs right before the vote comes up rehashing negative headlines for Richland County can it potentially impact a vote in another county. And it just makes me wonder uh, what the media would do once we begin pushing for another penny and it's solely for transit. I just don't know how Richland voters would respond. And that's all I was saying. Well, well, I, I you know, I, I feel like I'm the living history on this board, but the, the actually, I, I don't think we ever put forth a referendum question that was transit only. We had a lot, there was a lot of discussion about whether, you know, whether something could pass that was was transit only. But the, okay. the thing was that 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 people to vote for a penny, there had to be some benefit to everybody in the service area. And because we didn't have as robust a system as we have now, um, we we were there were areas where um, transit wouldn't even be available, um, and so the the feeling was that it had to be a broad question so that there was a benefit to every voter that they could see for themselves, and and that was the reason for the combination. And as um, as some of the veterans on this and on the comment and on the board know. Um, from the very beginning, there was um, uh, there was uh, some anti-transit uh, voices in the public um, that we ended up, you know, having to have uh, court cases to see, you know, that that even challenged once the once the penny had passed whether we could pay for transit for it. So um, this it's not a it's not an easy issue to con you know to consider but I, I think it I think it's short-sighted I mean I'm sitting in the middle of a mess right now <laughs> evident that, that widening roads is not the answer to getting people to where they need to go <laughs> well, well, well Ms. Moot I'm going to add you to that list of uh, you know authorities on the history of the uh, of the penny uh, on this comic board okay so I apologize for leaving you off that list initially yeah, listen, listen my I, my my history, I, I, in in longevity, I'm here. Sometimes my memory fails me, so don't count on me for too much. <laughs> well, do you have anything else you want to add or uh, any more input on the issue as far as defining and fine tuning the comment needs? Yes. Oh, Dr. Morris. If, if I could just piggyback on sure. uh, what was said about the uh, penny tax, I think that we need to have something to sell to the community or the county in terms of how we spent our monies and what our plans are for the future. And uh, I'm notorious for saying we are 45% through the time period, but yet we've spent 55% of the monies or have it in on hand. So we need to be careful in terms of how we spend our dollars. I don't think we want to go back to the council and ask them for additional monies uh, to support uh, the comment. And if we, we don't be careful, we will be doing that. Um, back on the topic here, uh, I think uh, uh, ED needs to know bus routes need to have some type of background um, with cities. Uh, individual coming out of the rural area may have a lot of book knowledge 
but if you don't have that actual experience, that will set us back. So those are some comments. Dr. Morris, would that be like more of a background in urban planning? Yes, that, yeah. yes. Okay, does that tie into what you were saying earlier, Ms. Moon, about someone having a background in planning, or were you thinking well, well, um, something I would different? Think, I, think, I, think that, I think that planning is an, an essential, I think what I'm hearing Dr. Mars say is to that, someone who's had like, some hands-on operational experience with yes. bus systems in urban areas. Is that right, Dr. That's right. Mark? That's, that's correct. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. Anything else on item 3B? All right, item 3C. I think we may have covered this already uh, in our discussion regarding the position overview, and maybe even to some degree on our discussion about defining and fine-tuning what the comet needs and like I may have mentioned earlier, asking staff to look into what well, happened. Uh, Mr. Champs uh, have staff look into uh, comparisons from uh, other transit agencies with respect to, I guess, our pay and salary, but also, I guess, with respect to the position description as well. So, uh, Ms. Bonnell Reed, is that something that staff could, could do? If you could have Mr. Champs, I'll have staff do that. All right. Yes. Next item. Uh, assuming there's nothing else with respect to item uh, 3C is item 3D, uh, process. So I wasn't here uh, when uh, you know, the comment hired you know, the, uh, the previous director, uh, Mr. Ando. So does anyone have any comments on process? We want to use the same process as we used previously? Um, any thoughts on that? But do we... Mr. Ferguson, I think the process was all right. We just we just made a you know a, a strange you know we got carried away, but the process was all right because all the board was sitting there going went through the uh, applications and it was fine fine tuned. Okay, uh, I think Morris. we've learned when you are presented with. Uh, resumes, information, need to thoroughly check that out. And that's something we didn't do in the past. I was on that search committee too. And I think the, the as I think the process was uh, the right way to go. And one of the, one of the factors in that was that we did have a, a consultant working with us who was experienced and just managing the logistics of that and making sure that all of the records were kept in order um, I, I don't I don't think we could have functioned without that kind of, of help and doing the summaries of what happened in you know in each, in each of the meetings there's I mean this is not a this is not a um, project that I think we can call on staff to do the kind of work that the consultant did for us. So I, I, would, I would strongly recommend that we um, have either a search firm or a consultant to support the process, but the process itself of the committee's review and the, the, the sifting down and then bringing before the board seemed to work very well last time. So, Ms. Moon, the last time, uh, in addition to a search firm, um, you know, the, the board also, uh, or the committee rather, also had a consultant that was working closely with it. I, Mr. Burgess, you can help me remember, but I don't think there was a search firm. I think we just had the consultant. Isn't that right? We just had, a, just had a consultant last time. Right. Okay. Right. And, uh, and what was the role? I'm sorry, Ms. Mood. And so, or either Mr. Fergus, you can answer this question. What was the primary role of the consultant last time? What did he or she, you know, do for the committee? Uh, the consultant got all the applications and went through them, but it was, wasn't any vetting, you know. And I think the uh, consultant worked with Mr. Deschamp. Now, Mr. Deschamp was human resource during that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the two of them, uh, you know, um, got the, the process going and brought in uh, applications to us. And then the committee 
uh, reviewed those applications, but all that legwork was done by uh, human resource and the consultant. Okay. So when I, when I heard from you, Mr. Furgis, was that we don't, you don't believe that the vetting uh, process, yeah. or at least that piece of the process last time was, yeah. was adequate. Right. And so how do we, I guess, sort of tie up that loose end going forward? Uh, is that where the, uh, is that, do we ask more of the consultant? Is that where a search firm comes in? If we use a search, a search firm, we can have that mandated in the search that these things are validated. Okay. You know? All right. So, and, and if I can, just, and if I can just add too, you know, it, it's a it's a very sensitive process because, and and that's why I think we do need the experts with us because. You are trying to recruit from people who are already in positions and functioning well, and the, and they have to have a lot have the applicants have to have some control over um, when they are going to let it be known that they are being considered for another position, and so that is a a, a, a real sensitive um, matter because they don't want to put their current positions at risk. Um, by our disclosing before they are ready that they are are our applicants, and yet you can't really vet people without it being known that you're considering people for a position. So that's the kind of difficulty of the process. So sounds like what I'm hearing is that we may want to consider the search firm in addition to the consultant. Is that? Or, right? or maybe the search firm has, um, or maybe the search, search firm, firm has, has both. Has yes. some kind of consultation. Yes, they may be equipped to do both those things. Mr. Fergus, were you suggesting that when we, uh, whoever, uh, I guess when the RP or whatever goes out for the consulting firm, that uh, not the consulting firm, the uh, search firm, that also included in there, I guess, be the requirement see, most of, of these consulting search firms don't don't do that anyway. In other words, they're not going. They, they rep, well, I guess some of them may their reputation on you know a falsified uh, sure. thing. But I think the way we did it last time, those things were just mailed to uh, uh, Hutto mm -hmm. and then passed on to us, and then we didn't go back because at least in the last one, that wasn't the top candidate we were looking at. Remember the top candidate. Not one or two candidates. Yeah, backed out. Backed out. Sure. See, and uh, our, our famous chair, Mrs. Uh, Joyce. <laughs> 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 Joyce liked. Uh, Still famous. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to get that out. <laughs> <laughs> Are we on the record? Uh, first. <laughs> Public meeting. <laughs> Okay, so just so I'm clear then, um, I kind of get the, well, Mr. Fergus, I get the impression that you think, and I want to hear from other board members as well, that perhaps a search firm could do all of this, that we may not need a consultant and a search firm, that the search firm could perform both functions. That's, that's what I'm thinking. I'm going to make a motion towards that. Uh, well, we haven't got to the search firm listing oh, yet. Okay. Yeah. Talk about the process right okay. now. Yeah. Mr. Chair, if I may. No, you recognize Mr. Smith? I, I guess this this whole time, I, I may have been conflating those two roles and thinking that they indeed would be the same, essentially, that instead of an individual, we would engage a search firm that would have consulting as part of its um, duties. And I guess that would be fleshed out in the procurement process, right? We would, we would issue... Uh, whether it's a full RFP or, or, or just a re request for, uh, however that would work from a procurement standpoint, but we would make it clear what the expectations were in that you know, request and then vet the firms from that point. Is that, is that, the, is that the way this would work given that we, we seem to have some confusion about what the role would be? Right, and, and, and actually, Mr. Smith, I, I think you're spot on, and that's what Mr. Fergus was saying, that you know, we can make the consulting piece a requirement, you know, that, that can be included in, in the you know, procurement or in, in the RFP, uh, as opposed to going out and doing two RFPs, one for a search firm and one for a consultant, 
uh, yeah. just uh, why not just uh, get it all in one? Just you know, we're looking at looking at a search firm or firms that actually provide that service. Yeah, and that's what I would advocate for. I just wanted to note that I was a little confused that we were talking in terms of two different roles, but I see now that we're kind of you know combining those. Well, Mr. Smith, you're right. We were talking about two two different roles, but it was Mr. Fergus who said, and I believe Ms. Moon said the same thing, that um, you know, at least recommended looking for a firm that provides, search firm that provides that service. Yep, yep. So, Great. I guess you, you're spot on. Uh, as far as, with respect to the process, um, how soon... And when, and when we talk... Go ahead, Ms. Moon. Excuse me. No, you go ahead. You have the floor. When, go ahead. About the the consultant role, it really is a it really was a matter of then once you have the, the the candidates found that you're considering that consultant role really is staffing the search committee. I mean that's that's essentially what what that person did, and that includes as as we pointed out. Well, I mean the vetting process can certainly be a part of the the, the search identifying candidates because there's no point in identifying candidates that um, don't meet our expectations or our, what, our requirements. Sure, and I believe the, the point that was expressed by Dr. Morris and uh, Mr. Fergus was that last time they felt like the vetting piece of the process was inadequate. That's right. um, and so making sure that uh, the search firm, uh, or whomever it is that we decide to go with, that the vetting is robust this time around. Um, and so that's why when we started the conversation, uh, it was about a consultant versus the search firm, the role of the consultant versus the search firm. And then, you know, uh, Mr. Fergus said, well, why not go with a search firm that can provide the consulting piece as well, which would, you know, which would also address the concerns that we, uh, we have from the last time about the vetting process uh, just being, uh, you know, rather anemic. I think in addition to that, you need uh, uh, someone who can take the minutes and get it back to you as soon as possible. Um, Mr. Deschamp did it at the last time, but that probably was a little too much for him. Uh, we need to take a look at who you could... Uh, get as a administrative assistant, uh, whatever you want to call it, to get you that information back as rapidly as possible. Well, 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 well and I think the search firm, that would be, I mean, whatever in the package of things we would expect, for me, would be included keeping the record of our process. Um, but, but then uh, Ms. Mood, uh, an individual or so, would have to attend the meetings. And that's, that's what you're suggesting also? No, I'm, con I'm <clears throat> suggesting that whoever the person is that the search firm identifies to work with us through the process, be the person who keeps the record. Because, I'm, I mean, it's, it's really, um, if, if, if you bring someone in who's, who's just staff support to take minutes, that, that creates... Yeah. That can create work. I think I, I think a, 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 a competent, capable consultant will keep the record for us. Uh, uh, Mr. Chase Burgess, but my memory is getting short. Uh, <laughs> but I'm thinking the last time, didn't we put that uh, request out on the transit wires and then Ms. Hutto received the application? Um, I, I can't that, remember neither, but Mr. Uh, Deschamps should be able to. Yeah, uh, I think we, we that kept that in the, the transit. Transit you know, website? Yeah. And, and it came to her? <coughs> right. I think the difference between then and now, when you guys did look for it, um, <coughs> you only used Ms. Hutto. You didn't have a, an agency to help you. 
No. So having been an employee of an agency and having to utilize one, employment agencies usually cover everything that you guys are looking for. They vetted the employees, they look, you know, they know before they present them to you if they're meeting all your requirements. Um, and then to what Ms. Lewis wanted as far as the minutes are being said, <coughs> would, that could be the um, employee under Pam's position with the board liaison and whatever that title, they could transcribe those minutes for you. Thank you. Uh, as far as just staying on process here, just, just a little longer, do we have, I guess, some sense of when we want to post the position? Obviously, we got to tidy up uh, the uh, job description, uh, but uh, do we have an idea as far as how soon we want to get it posted, when we want to post it? I'm thinking we should do it sometime in January, don't you think? I guess it's take three question. months to, I guess to fill the position. I guess my only question, Mr. Furgis, would be: Do we uh, would we have? I guess have right. you have it right by then. Um, I'm thinking maybe perhaps February. Well, let me ask you. Let me ask me. So let me ask you this question, Ms. Bonner Reed. So once <coughs> this body agrees on uh, the description, mm -hmm. would a motion have to be made, and then a recommendation go go to the uh, full board, or once we uh, this body agrees on the description, um, you know that um, that's now um, uh, it goes into effect immediately, or, or, or do we need the full board to vote on this? I don't know. I, I can, uh, can you answer that question, uh, Doctor Morris? Uh, any decision that is made in the committee has to go to the full board. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. But so so that's the other thing too. Then so even if we let's say we figure it out, you know, by in January. We wouldn't be able to vote on it full board until, uh, until February. Technically, no, you might be able to because if you have a meeting, let's say the second Thursday, and you say this is what we want to carry forward to the board, I have two weeks to get it on that board packet for January. Well, you still could potentially get it heard in January. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, well, I do we don't want to. We really don't want to rush it now. We want to do this one right. This one right. Right. <laughs> right. For that too. Right. Yes, right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, well. I well Hold on, just one second, Ms. Boo. I, I just, I and just then I'll have recognize a, Mrs. Smith in a second as well. Go ahead, Ms. Bonnery. I just have a question. Does an RFP have to go out for the search firm? Or you could just choose the search firm? No, I would think, well, 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 I would think well, an RFP would have to go out. And I was asking to bring all the guy to that section yeah. to bring this, this is, hi, this is Pam um, Baker. I, I think you, you could possibly do it without having to go through a formal RFP process. Um, um, and I think um, our, our, our new contracting officer could, could, could probably handle it, but you would, you would need to have at least um, three, three firms that you would be um, considering. But I, don't, I think Ms. Heiser and I talked, and I don't know it has to go through a full formal RFP process. Um, Ms. Baker, question for you, is that, the, uh, well, is it because of the type of service that's being offered and that's why it didn't have to go through the RFP process? And also is this, um, I'm assuming uh, that um, whatever the, the dollar amount's gonna be or the, or the price tag for this, it would be, I guess, within the authority of the um, interim director uh, right. you know, without having to get approval from the full board? Right, if, it, if it's under a certain um, spending Special amount. Yeah. Yeah, that that uh, under that threshold, um, they could do it by getting, you know, like I said, vetting three firms at, at, at a minimum three firms. And so it could be done that way. OK, uh, Mr. Smith and then Ms. Moo. Here, uh, just again, kind of process question earlier in the meeting, I, I was suggesting that the search firm help us refine the job description. Okay. Um, and if that's the will of the committee, then I think we'd have to have them in place first before we post the job, right? Right. Right. So it, it would be kind of difficult. I mean, February might work if, if we, if everything works out quickly, if we get a search firm in place, but they're probably going to have to, there's probably going to be a little bit of a, a period of time where a search firm we select, you know, they're going to have to learn about us and uh, have some time to do their work. I'm just, I'm kind of questioning the, that we'll be able to have something 
I, I maybe maybe the goal for us would be to have have a posting by the end of the first quarter. Sure, sure. Um, and I certainly agree with that approach, Andy, as far as using the search firm to help us refine the position. I mean, I went, you know, Mr. Burgess, and then you know, I don't want to rush it. Um, but the other thing too is I'm not sure if I'm prepared to vote on either one of these search firms today. Uh, either, you know, I don't really know a whole lot about them. I mean, we have the, the links to, you know, their websites, but I'm not really in the position to have it. I think there's what four search firms, but I'm not in the position today to have, a, I guess, an informed discussion about it and then and make an informed decision, uh, unless there's, there are other members uh, you know, of this committee who feel differently. No, I, I'm in full agreement. I, I think I need more information personally on the firms themselves. Yeah. Ms. Moo? And, and I certainly do agree that um, I think the first step is getting the search firm in place because um, I, I, I think we can create problems by posting a position without the expertise that we, that we are acknowledging that we need from that group. So um, I, I would say that and, and to be able to then post it in the first, by the, by the end of the first quarter of the year, I, well, I mean, I'm thinking the calendar year is probably more feasible. Um, so just to go back to where I was um, and what Ms. Baker said, yeah, we don't technically need to do an RFP because of the process, um, but I was trying not to go beyond, but with the agencies that you have listed here, we also utilize the state contract for most of our procurement needs. And I brought, they actually have a list of executive search agencies. So sometimes, well, majority of time we utilize them, that whole process of doing a whole formal thing kind of gets us ahead of the game. So they have about 10 people listed here, um, none of being these, not sure where these come from. And how we normally do it with contact, like she said, at least three of them to get, well, their prices on here. They're gonna charge us 20% of that person's salary. Don't know what these would charge us, but we would just reach out to them, let them know our needs. We already know what their fee is gonna be. And they send us in who they think is suitable, which is what we're doing now for the planning person. Um, just kind of looking for a headhunter to help us any way they can. So yeah, if wherever this go, Look at the state contract list and you can go and get three people or more. I'd say they have a list of all of them. Just have somebody, whoever the lead would be, um, Mr. Deshaun's probably contact, right. send out what we need. They will send back what they can do for us and we can move from there. Sure. Thank you. Well, I have a confession to make, and that is I don't have the subject matter expertise when it comes to, you know, who is a, uh, I guess, uh, stellar search firm for transit authorities. So um, I know for me, I would certainly want some input, you know, from the staff with respect to, uh, you know, the search firms that are on that list, you know, I'm, I'm assuming they're all reputable, but who's more reputable or what have you. Um, Ms. Bonnery? So I'll answer that question. The four that are on here, I went to my colleagues at APTA and asked for, um, some ideas of some transit-focused search firms, and that's where I got these four from. Got it. Now, let me ask you something on those state. Are those local folks that are... I don't know if we all, we all this transit experience going to come local. They're local agencies, not necessarily say they'll stick to searching for local people. So, I mean, looking for transit. I mean, you want to take illustration, please. Oh. And I, I, like I said, in talking with them, you can let them know that having transit experience is what not a preferred, you know, you can let them know that, hey, having transit experience put this person ahead of. No, but I'm, I'm saying that agency, if that agency isn't transit oriented, they don't know who they're talking to, you know. I don't see the, the relationship between these state folks and actual transit people because you don't have that much transit around South Carolina. 
I got what you're saying, but again, in the ones I mean, that what, I, go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. the ones that I've talked to, like say, even with just the human, the people themselves, not a lot of transit skilled people just sitting around waiting for a job. But those that I've called when we're trying to fill our positions, they call in, they learn about the comic, they learn about the transit, they learn about the industry, then they try to fill our needs. So you may have one on here, like you're saying, that does not know, but these, where they put, they put in with political subdivisions. They know about procurement. They kind of, before they make this list, they have to make a certain cut. So where transit may not be there or in that niche, they learn about what is needed before they go and move forward. But the ones through APTA will already have yeah. that experience. That's the difference, yeah. After it, it, it's, it's where we want to be. Um, and that's fine. I was just giving you, know, you yeah, the second option. Forth, right? No, that, I just, I asked for four. Oh, I asked for three and four. Oh, you finally made it. Um, I thought you were just <laughs> parked outside. <laughs> I have been parked outside. I just want to recognize an in-person. <laughs> uh, Mr. Black and Happy, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think maybe you were going, I think you were going there, uh, Mr. Burgess, but uh, Ms. Donald Reed, so what's the difference between that what's the difference between the four firms that are listed on the agenda and those firms that are listed on the uh, state contractor list? Okay, that's why she's trying to get She's saying these are actually transit-related agencies. Okay. Yeah. And whereas these are, I guess I would say general, general skill. Gotcha. Yeah. So they're, they're not transit focused, but right. could do the job. Yes. Okay. They can gotcha. find they are these are slated to do executive level position searches. Okay. And the uh four uh firms that listen on the agenda but specifically where are they located? Are they located um, in South Carolina no. or no, he's outside the state. They're outside of the state. There are several different places. I think one of them is in Atlanta. Um, but I think the one of the things that I asked for is that they had some kind of experience placing in the southeastern portion of the United States. Because I do think that that's important because we're a little different in the South. Anything else on this? But yeah, Mr. First, the thing I have is uh, the, agency, the state agency may do a good job, but they, if I'm looking for a scientist, they can tell me a good scientist after they read the resume, a good doctor after they read the resume, but a transit person, know a transit person as soon as they start talking, if that's the way they function, you know? I understand. Well, sounds what I'm hearing, uh, Ms. Burgess, is that you're going to be more comfortable with a search firm that is transit centric, That's good. as opposed to just a general search firm that can do the job, but they're not transit oriented. Not transit. All right. How does anyone else feel about that? I think that's very important. I th actually, I think that's sure. key. Basically, from the experience that I've had the past two years, uh, I think uh, it's, it's transit people no transit people. Transit is much more than I ever thought it would be, and I've been in almost 10 years. And I think as it evolves over the future and the challenges that we have and where we want to go as an organization, that's going to be uh, very important to have someone that knows that industry inside and out, but also at the same time can develop those relationships throughout the country or really right now the world. And um, I think you, you find out that there's only so many people that are in the transit industry. You start as you read and you do research or just trying to update yourself, you see certain names pop up different places and you realize yeah, it's a huge industry, but uh, you kind of start dealing with the same people. And I think that's where relationships are very important. But also, when you have someone out there that has that type of background and know what it takes to be successful in that field, I think they can see that and find that in your candidate as far as what that agency might might need and where they want to go and where they want to be in the future. Okay. 
Well, I guess I'm here. Uh, we need to look at search firms that are transit oriented. <laughs> right. That's good. I, that's I, I, I want okay, that content expert. All right. Well, we've got four, one, two, three, five, actually. No, one, two, three, four that are before us. My math is off. Again, I'm not in a position to take a vote today. I know I'm not. Um, you know, with respect to the search firm, because we so, can get some more. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I have a question. I could take a deeper dive into this and pull information if you, if it's yes, the pleasure of the committee. Absolutely. Uh, I would certainly. Uh, I know I would love uh, for you know the staff to do that to pull the information on not just these firms, but also if there are uh, any other transit-oriented firms that you come across, and maybe just uh, provide a. A, a summary because I'm not going to read the entire right. uh, web page. Or, you know? or would it be preferable to for me to try to have them do a, a 10 minute elevator presentation, yeah, presentation like to the board that, that says this is my ex you could ask questions and I know for me <laughs> that would work after I had a chance to review any sort of synopsis or something. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I would then, provide yeah, a synopsis yeah, too. I'd review that yeah, then, um, but you know, again, I welcome any thoughts or ideas. Well, I think if we're talking about a, a nationwide kind of um, search for the search firm, that maybe we could do the what you're talking about presentations, but with a smaller group. You know, if we could narrow it down to one or two, because what we don't want to do is to spend a lot paying for people to come. <laughs> Right, talk to right, us right. just just for the search firm because we're gonna have to, we're gonna have by, to do that for the candidates. Yeah, it would be by Zoom. I oh, have them oh, zoom in yeah. for Imagine like that. Five, <laughs> yeah, just for like five or ten minutes, a five minute presentation, three to five minute presentation, and then a Q and A from I the five minutes. I mean, five minutes. Okay. Five five minute okay. presentation. I, I I would still I'd still like to have that interim step in place. Of looking at right. the okay. content yeah. before we do that. Before okay. we do okay. right. right. Before we have them do before, presentations. Before we have them do the the, present, the five minute presentation. So I okay. guess more so what you're saying, Ms. Moon, is you want that the content in advance, not just in advance of the meeting, but you know when we get that content, and then maybe at another meeting, have them you know present whether it's two or three uh, firms uh, that I guess we're. We as a body decide that okay, well, we're a little more comfortable with firm A, B, and C as opposed to D and E. So we would like to hear presentation presentations, if you will, from A, B, and C. What have you? Okay. So is it is does it um, figure to for the January meeting? I provide a synopsis to go in the packet, and then schedule the five minutes in the February meeting. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, uh, well. Because we're talking about wanting to have this posted, uh, and again, this is just uh, by March. you know by March. You know that's the aim. Mm -hmm. So the question would be: Could we have the next meeting where you provide that information, we discuss it, and then by the February meeting, have the, the presentation to your point, Ms. Moon, you know, from those search firms uh, that you know we you know uh, would prefer to you know, hear from. And then um, I don't know. Maybe perhaps even have a second meeting in February. Potentially, we need to come back and vote uh, on the search firm, so that way they can start working on this uh, position overview and get it posted by March. So maybe that we're looking at potentially two meetings in February. Well, that, I think it with an ad hoc committee that we shouldn't be on a monthly meeting schedule. I mean, I, I think we ought to meet at whatever frequency we need to already to take the next step. Well, the only reason I was thinking about mm -hmm. once a month for the committee, Ms. Boomer said, well, we can just keep the process going. Mm -hmm. That's all. I mean, if it turns out that we don't need to meet monthly, then look, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to have other things to do, right? <laughs> so so well, I'm, I, not gonna, I'm not going to force your hand, but I just, you know, just making sure that we keep the process um, moving along. Because I know through the board, we want to get this I'll take care of. Yeah. I, I didn't want us to be waiting for another month to do sure. the, another meeting when we had things we could do in between. Well, put it to you this way, Ms. Boot, if there's nothing for us to meet about, I assure you we won't have that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I don't think we need a motion or anything like that for, um, for I guess, for staff to bring us uh, information for the next meeting regarding uh, you know, these search firms. Um, no. 
I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave a motion no. necessary for that. I just got it on my to do list. All right. That's why, that's why they pay you the big bucks. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, anything else on this item about the transit search firm listing? Okay. I don't think we have any items for executive session either. And I guess before we get to item five, which is adjournment, any other business, anything else that we uh, need to discuss or miss anything, um, you know, as we were going through those items? Not, and I'll entertain a motion. So move. Move to property seconds, not debatable. Uh, Ms. Bonnell Reed, take the vote, please. Chairman Walker? Yes. Mr. Burgess? Yes. Mr. Herbert? Yes. Ms. Moon? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.